From this morning's gospel reading from Matthew chapter 1. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken. So far God's word. Life happens, says the bumper sticker. And so goes the thinking regarding the perennialness of life on earth. People believe that nothing works according to any kind of a plan, divine or otherwise. Life feels like you're playing a pinball machine. You fire the ball up and you watch it weave its way down, bumping off the bumpers, working its way towards the bottom. You hope that maybe you can flip it back up, score a few more points before the game is over. You go out to your car and you discover a flat tire. Life happens. You go to work and you find a pile of paperwork you didn't anticipate. Well, life happens. You make your plans to play golf and an unexpected rainstorm strikes. Life happens. You go to the doctor and receive an unsettling diagnosis. Life happens. It feels like you're bouncing off one bumper to the next, from one day to the next, from mountaintop rush the lowest point of a valley of gloom. Nothing makes sense. Everything feels so random. Life happens until it doesn't anymore. Now, I know that sounds like a sort of doom and gloom assessment of life, if ever there's been one. Doesn't feel like the way to kick off a festive holiday week. Hardly seems like a world into which Christmas should come. But we've been here before. I mean, Judea, in the early years of the Common Era, or Anno Domini AD as it was traditionally known, were dark times, and they found a pessimistic outlook in the hearts of the people. The prophet Isaiah had actually foreseen this time hundreds of years earlier and had written, but there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Naphtali and the land of Zebulun, but in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of darkness on them light has shone. Our destiny is not random. Things don't just happen by chance. The hand of God lifts us up by his grace. He encourages us with his promises gives us hope and joy in their completion. In his word, God prophesies to us what is coming. And in Jesus Christ, he brings all things to pass. Today, around 1 AD, had been looking for a long promised Messiah. Many were beginning to lose hope they'd ever seen. The rabbis and the religious types began to reinterpret what the prophets had written. The expectations of Messiah changed People were now looking for a geopolitical leader who would end the Roman occupation and reestablish the kingdom of David. Well, the Gospel account of St. Matthew was written specifically for such a Jewish audience. And the Holy Evangelist begins his account saying, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. One's genealogy was quite important to Jews. The ability to trace one's bloodline back to Abraham meant you're part of the family, that you were one of the guys, so to speak. And Matthew continues that first part of the chapter, recounting all the generation from Abraham to David to Joseph, ending with these words in verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. From David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. As the son of Abraham, Jesus is the promised seed in whom all the nations of the world would be blessed. Just like the angel of the Lord had promised Abraham back in Genesis 22 when he told him, in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. As son of David, Jesus is the king of whom the prophet proclaims, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. 
on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The prophecies of the Old Testament are promises of God. Promises he gave and promises he intended to keep. Picking up with this morning's gospel reading from Matthew 1.18, we read, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from the sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Understanding that the prophecies of the Old Testament are promises of God to his people, well, the Jews had heard them. Many knew them by heart. Many longed for their fulfillment. The prophecy from today's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. It reports God's challenge to King Ahaz to seek after a sign, something Ahaz was hesitant to do. And so God speaks through his prophet. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and will call his name Emmanuel. Forgotten by some and reinterpreted by others, this prophecy is nonetheless fulfilled in the coming of the Christ child. God faithfully kept his promises to his people, even when his people were not too faithful to him. Paul, in today's epistle reading, reminds the early Christians of God's faithfulness when he begins his letter to the Romans saying, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the whole spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among the nations, and that includes you, who were called to Jesus Christ. The prophecy is fulfilled as a proof of God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Prophecy fulfilled serves as both a source of comfort and confidence for God's people. Promises made and promises kept grounds God's people in the knowing that God's hand is the steadying force in the universe. Life isn't purely random. Things don't just happen. And even when we feel that they do, God is behind all things. Bring them around in a manner that blesses his people. In today's readings from God's word, we see that nothing changed for God. He had his plan for our salvation, and nothing was going to change it. Though the religious types may have given up their hopes for a Messiah, settling for lesser versions than the one promised, God remained true to his plan and faithful to his promises. Emmanuel was going to come, and God was going to be with his people. Jesus is that Emmanuel. He is the fulfillment of prophecy. The long-awaited Messiah of whom Simeon would say, My eyes have seen your salvation. He would live among his people, teaching them the ways of God and all about the kingdom of God, receiving sinners, healing the sick and the affirmed. He would ultimately be the sacrifice that would satisfy God's law for everyone 
even as we have been acknowledging in our monthly memory verse, in this the love of God was manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Jesus came to be the rescuer of God's people who are bound to sin, death, and hell, and to free the sinful children of men from their deserved wrath and condemnation. Christ took our place under the law and suffered the punishment for the sins of humankind. That was God's plan. This was the purpose of the Christ all along, as Jesus tells us, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The writer to the Hebrews explains God's plan in this manner. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, you might want to turn to Hebrews 9. We pick up at verse 11. But when the Christ appeared as a high priest for the good things that have come, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means by the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, well, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our consciences and our, from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised in eternal inheritance. So while life happens on a daily basis, that does not mean we need to fear those random misadventures that come our way. And that's because our God is a faithful God who keeps the promises he makes. He didn't promise anyone a rose garden, an easy life without stress or strain. And why would he? He didn't even spare his own son from misery and death. And so how is it that we despair, despair when life happens to us? No, it is as Paul reminds us that we are to take heart. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? The prophecy fulfilled of a Messiah and salvation is God's gift to us. Prophecy fulfilled encourages us to trust God at his word, to depend upon his steadfast love and faithfulness. At the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, we find a celebration of trust and hope, of promises made and promises kept, of prophecy fulfilled in accordance with God's holy will. May this be your hope and your confidence today and all days through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please rise.